Hey everyone, it's Catherine. Today I'm gonna take you through a new project. Uh, last month in October, I made some laser cut pumpkins for my daughter to decorate and uh, we ended up spray painting them and sticking them in our yard and it was really fun. Uh, and I wanted to think of a craft that I could laser cut for her for Thanksgiving. And I thought what we really need is a three-dimensional turkey. So today I'm gonna to walk you through the whole process of how I designed this turkey uh, and then laser cut it out of cardboard. And then I'll have the file available for you so you can just go ahead and laser cut it uh, from any of the cardboard you have lying around. If you're like me, you have a lot of Amazon boxes that are cluttering up your house. So this is a great way to use those boxes to make some fun activities for your kids. Today I'm gonna to be using my Dremel DigiLab laser cutter. It's a 40 watt laser cutter. I've had it for over a year and I've really enjoyed working with it. I'm gonna be laser cutting my cut up Amazon boxes. And the software that I'll be using to make the files for this project is Adobe Illustrator and the Adobe Illustrator for iPad app, which is new and really fun. So I'm excited to show you that as well. Usually for my laser cutting files, I start by sketching in my notepad with a pencil or pen and creating my ideas that way. For this one, I knew what a general turkey shape is, so I started directly in the Illustrator for iPad app. What's really cool about this, this is on my iPad Pro, um, is that it works really well with the pencil. And so I can actually uh, use the pencil tool within the iPad app and then really get some good organic shapes. So take a look. That gives me at least the basis for my turkey and then I can start adjusting um, my actual shape to get a more organic feel. So that gives me the first bit of my file because sometimes I find it hard to draw the organic parts in Adobe Illustrator on my computer. So this gives me one of my two shapes that I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna draw the tail actually in my computer version in order to get the symmetry that I'd like to do for that tail. I took my file from the iPad app and opened it in my desktop version of Illustrator. You can see I've done a little bit of work on my turkey body to straighten it out, also to give it a flat bottom. And I've started building my tail. I build that up by using different shapes and then I'll use the Pathfinders tool to combine those in different ways uh, in order to make my final tail, which is here. So you can see how this is symmetrical. I've mirrored it and makes it really easy uh, in the desktop version to do that part. So the last thing I need to do for this file is to give it the slots that it'll use to put them together. To do that, first I just line up these two parts of the file, and I'm gonna put a rectangle down all the way. So the thing about doing slots that's important to keep in mind is that you, if you want them to have the same baseline, you need those slots to equal the same part. So I'm going to shorten this one to halfway, duplicate it here. So now you can see I have two slots that are equaling the entire length of these two pieces. I'm going to take the bottom one and my tail and drag it over. And now you can see that I'm left with one slot in my turkey and one slot in my tail. I actually want this, the tail to be a little bit further back so I drag that slot backwards and that's still the same, the correct height. The other important part about slots is taking into account the thickness of your material. So your cardboard might be a little bit different than mine, but most cardboard used for Amazon boxes is about an eighth of an inch thick. So I need this slot to be the exact thickness of my other piece of cardboard. 
so when it goes together it's not uh, too wobbly and if it's too tight then you won't be able to slot it together i've made this a little bit loose so that my daughter can put this in and out um, you could tighten it a little bit and you want to take the thickness of your material and make it a little bit smaller because when your laser cutter goes through it's actually burning the material off this is called kerf and when that material is burned off then the the hole is actually larger so you have to take that into account when you're making slots if you need it to be really snug i'll probably do a separate video talking about that so that we can get into detail but for now this is pretty straightforward for your cardboard you need to be slightly smaller than an eighth of an inch my two file pieces are done and I'm ready to prep this design for my laser cutter. To do that, uh, I'm going to nest my two designs so it takes up as little space as possible. Um, and I also wanted to take into account the corrugation of my cardboard. So to make this turkey pretty strong, I'm going to flip the tail so that the corrugation is going the opposite way. So you'll see what I mean when I, when I show you the final. So this is now aligned at the top and I'm ready to export. When I export, I do uh, save a copy as a PDF. So I'm just going to do this. And then I also have a PDF setting for laser cutting. So you'll see this default has all of these check marks on. We want all of those off in specific settings. So I saved a laser cutting uh, preset in order to do that. So I know that it's correct every time. I save that PDF and now I'm ready to go to my laser cutter software and turn on my laser cutter. I turned on my Dremel laser cutter and the booster fan for it. So now I'm ready to put my material in. I'm using one piece of Amazon box cardboard. I'm gonna put it generally in the middle of my bed here. Then I have the Dremel software pulled up. This is cloud-based, uh, so I can just use it on my uh, local host on my computer. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the import capture. What this does is that it takes pictures of my material so I know exactly where it is on the bed for when I put my laser cutting file. So it's going to turn the light off and then go around and take pictures of the material and build it up so that I have that picture to go off of. So what it did was take nine photos of the entire bed and then stitch it together in as best as it can. And you can see that I have the general shape of my piece of cardboard. I'm going to hit done. This is now on my laser bed so that I can position my file on here. I didn't used to use this very often. When you have a piece of material that's really big or if you have specific nesting that you're trying to do, it's not quite detailed enough for that, but for cardboard, it's great because I'll use the same file over and over again and then use this to kind of position it around and make sure that it fits the current piece of cardboard. It makes it really easy to do batches. So I'm going to drag my turkey PDF into here and I always make sure to click to only import the cut lines, I find that to be the most consistent. And here is my turkey. You can see it's gonna fit pretty well in there. Actually, I might position it this way. Um, so my file is in here now. I'm gonna select my material. 
Dremel has settings for a lot of different materials that are tested and work specifically with this laser cutter. So I'm going to click on cardboard. I found that this does work consistently. And then the last thing that I check is that I run perimeter, which is this button up here, in order to make sure that it, the file is where it says it is. So it's running around the outside of that file. And yep, that looks pretty good. I might actually move it up a smidge because it's just a tiny bit close to that bottom edge. Okay. So now I'm ready to send the file to my laser cutter. I'm going to click start. This shows me the specific file. If I have multiple cut lines or engravings, I can reorder them, but I just have one. So I'm going to send to the cutter. And now I'm at my cutter. My laser has adjusted, which means that the Z depth is correct. Let's double check. You can see that puck fits underneath, so it's focused on my material. My material is laser bowl, and I'll remain here. Okay, we are ready. Now it says it's only going to take 45 seconds to cut out the turkey, which is pretty awesome. It's very fast. It's really fast when it's just a couple lines that it's cutting out. So let's take a look. We have our two pieces. They slot together. So this turkey is ready for Emma to decorate and color. Uh, we've got the corrugation going up and down on the body, and we have it going sideways on the tail for extra stability. Uh, and I think that that looks really fun. So I'm going to include the file for this turkey, uh, both the PDF and the Illustrator file, in the link in my description. Go over to GitHub, download it, try it out. Uh, you can also hack it and tweak it. Uh, to your heart's desire and let me know if you cut this out and what you do with it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and like.